Hey everybody, Brian here. Uh, today I've got Zach with me. What's up? And what we're going to do is we're going to unbox and set up a BZ13 from Betsera. Uh, one of my favorite machines that we carry, honestly, as a company. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about you, but... No, definitely. It's, I, it's I throw these in a lot of bars, so I know them pretty well, too. Yeah, so what do you do for the company, then? Uh, I do a lot of commercial sales. I do a lot of education, training. You might find me on some coffee casts or helping out, uh, you know, on phone sales as well. Yeah. So kind of yeah, all over the place. That's great. And yeah. maybe you've seen me around. I do the videos. So. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, before we get started, I do want to mention that coffee cast. It's a one live one-on-one -on -one, uh, coffee demo of any of pretty much any of the products that we carry. Mm -hmm. uh, so. You could get Zach, you could get Missy if you've seen her in some of our videos. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of fun that we do, and it's a free. You just sign up on our homepage and uh, book your time, and it's a Zoom call. Yeah, and if you don't have the machine already or you want to do it as a post-sale, or right. you dial in with a professional like myself or Missy, and uh, we can take your exact grinder, your exact machine, and dial that in with you. So yeah. I think it's a great feature that we yeah. like to offer for free. Right. So let's get to it, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already cut off. Uh, the, it has some uh, tension, whatever you call those. You know. Yeah, yeah. We already cut those off. But let's... Without hitting the lights. Yeah, don't hit the lights. We've got a lot of packaging in there. And so first off, I can already tell you, we've got our BZ13 Crema is what it, we're calling it here. That is the instruction manual. All right. Uh, quality control, it passed quality control, love to see that. We've got this, this is adhered to the top of it. As you can clearly see, this whole machine is covered in laser film. Uh, you're going to want to peel that off. Uh, what I like to do personally, I don't know if you can get in there, Mark, but I like to use just like a, a straight razor, uh, just, just the blade. It, it might be a little dangerous, but you know, you, you can cut at a corner and it kind of really helps you peel it off. I, we're not going to peel it off because, my goodness, it would take better half of an hour mm -hmm. to get it. It is kind of satisfying, though, once you start. Oh, it, it yeah. actually kind of is. You're right. So let's get that completely out of the box. All right. And then we also have the accessory box, which actually comes above the drip tray. Yeah. So what's in there? So we have a couple different things. We have back flushing discs to make sure that we're properly cleaning our machine. Same with brushes. Uh, you actually get a small little tamp and a little doser as well inside right. there. Uh, so with this, another cool feature that comes with these Bezeras is the fact that it comes with a bottomless porta filter. And I love is, that. It's great. So you can really dial in your espresso and watch if you have any channeling as you're dialing mm -hmm. that new machine in. And then also uh, double spouted. And that, you know, that does look like a pretty nice basket in there. We, yeah. we were debating what, what size it was before we went on. Mm -hmm. And I'm pleasantly surprised. I'd say that's easily an 18 gram basket yeah. right there. Which we're going to be kind of dialing in a little right. bit later. So yeah, let's, 17 let's grams. put that in there. Let's, because while you're heating up your machine, you're going to want to definitely have that in there so that you can warm up the portafilter as well. I just, I, you know, I love these portafilters with the, the logo right on the, the end there. Uh, lots of options for filling up your water tank. What we're going to end up doing is just using uh, our BWT pitchers here. Uh, let's toss some water in there and see what happens. And the water reservoir looks a little bit different from other machines as well. Agreed. Uh, honestly, I, I really love the shape of this water reservoir, uh, to be honest. Where, whereas with like the, the Profitec and the ECM ones are just a nice big one, you know, it, it kind of has a curve to the top of it. So like when you're moving, when you're moving the, uh, the reservoir, the whole machine around a little bit, kind of doesn't splash up as much as what I've found. Yeah, and, and maybe in a commercial setting, if you had this, you don't have to worry about seeding that every time, running right, into any issues. Right, exactly, anything, because it is it uh, hose-driven. And mm -hmm. honestly, you could, you know, I not that I would necessarily recommend it, but you could put this hose in literally anything, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't even have to use the reservoir in the back. Yeah. Um, as long as it's got water in it, it should be fine. So let's turn that on. I think we probably should have enough water in there already, but... If you wouldn't mind turning that on for me, Zach. You got it. And one thing about the switch, you actually go down on the switch to turn on. So a little different. Throws me off sometimes. All right. But you'll see that indicator light turn on. There we go. There's the vibration pump. 
filling up our boiler. This is a heat exchange machine, so there's just one big steam boiler in there uh, with the heat exchanger going through it. Uh, once it's done filling, I think we're going to see... I think, uh, you know, with this shot right here, I think it's important to mention we've got the PM model right here. Uh, we've got the DE model over here already warmed up, mm -hmm. and we'll take a look at that and kind of go over what the difference is with, with that is. It's quite clear when you look at them that with the PM, you have just one button, push it to, to pull a shot, take it, push it again to stop taking a shot. So a pretty straight up manual machine on this yeah, side. Yeah, uh, honestly. Yeah. And, and it's a, as you can also tell, it is not an E61 group machine. It is a, a BZ group machine. Uh, uh, one of the big things about that you'll notice is that the uh, Porta filters uh, are the the teeth of them are kind of set at an angle so like you wouldn't be able to use the same porta filters that you would like an ECF, uh, ECM or any E61 group machine yeah uh, but still come with your standard 58 mil yeah basket 58 mil there. just porta the filter. ears a little bit different so right. one thing to watch but I actually find that these are really easy to grab too so I like finding it. that little uh, point where you actually throw on these porta filters it feels really nice and very right. intuitive on when you first approach this machine. Right. So. And it's got, the BZ group is also electronically heated. It's right under here. You, I'm not going to open it up and show you, but if you imagine, that's just right over there. And it is electronically heated for a great heat stability uh, at the group, as well as like a really quick heat up time. All right. So you can still be warming up your uh, porta filters as you extract. So uh, preventing a lot of different channeling issues that you might run into like you would find when using cold porta filters. And now let, I'm just going to power cycle it real quick. There we have the version number of the, the software. For some reason, we're showing off. Ah, there we go. And now I've turned on the, the heater, the heating element, so that we, with that dot there, the three lines means that we're not even at uh, oh, let, sorry about that, Mark. We're not even at a temperature yet, uh, so we're going to start heating up. We can already go kind of go through some of the settings real quick. There are not many. Uh, you got the program where you can set the temperature. Uh, right now we're clearly in Celsius, but wouldn't you know there's a way to fix that too. Uh, here in the States, we're going to use this and we're going to turn it to Fahrenheit for us so that we know, don't have to do any math on that. So I'm going to set this to 202. And we should start heating up, I believe. And so this was why we got out this other one, is because it's already heated up. And so we don't have to wait for this to fully heat up before we get going. So let's get to pulling a shot, maybe making even a, a cappuccino on the, on the BZ13DE that we have over here. Mm -hmm. uh, first off, let's notice that the, we've got these tiger maple accents. I, I like those a lot. That yeah. So super customizable. Yeah. So whether it's at truly. your home or a small cafe bar or anything like that, you can really customize it to your own. Right. And we've got the Eureka Mignon Libra over here, mm -hmm. uh, which is the grind by weight grinder. Uh, lets you choose your dose and in grams a instead of a time dosing. So he's going to set that to 17 grams and it's going to give him 17 grams. And this is a great, uh, this is a great pairing. So you get, you know, your adjustable time using these buttons, mm -hmm. and then you have the consistency of getting the same amount of grams out every single time as well. So right. you, you don't have to think so much about this dial-in process. It's it's really right. relatively straightforward. You're right, it becomes very automated between mm -hmm. shots, which is very nice, very hands-off. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I think that that's a lovely thing that we we've got going yeah. with these this combination. He's also got the Betsera Tamper there. I love the red. Uh, I think that that's a, a sharp one. Yeah. I picked that one out for the, <laughs> for the live stream here. And it does have a nice feel to it. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, however that was milled is, is really nice. And so he's just going to put a nice tamp on that. Mm, just going for a nice little 25 pounds of pressure or so. <laughs> you know, pretty basic. The, the yeah. gauge on your arm read 25 yeah, pounds. Exactly. Of yeah. Too many days in front of a scale. <laughs> <you know. Yeah. laughs> sure. All right. 
did a little, uh, a little pre purge flush. there. And you can kind of see that that shower screen has a really nice distribution of that water right. as well. And so. you can also see that we've got a shot timer when you activate the pump as well, which mm -hmm. is a huge convenience yes, to have on these machines. Yeah. And then we can actually dial in these shots as well using our, our buttons. So if you actually right. hold down on the Bezerra button here, uh, as I pull a shot, I can actually dial in that shot according to the amount of seconds that we're pulling. Right. It's a two timed dosing settings in there. So. All right. Yeah, let's pull a shot. Let's go. You know what? Let's get you a, a glass to pull into. I think that would be a little pretty. I like this blue one. That one looks great. The, and by blue, I mean ocean. Nick, Nick will kill me if I mm -hmm. don't say that that's, that's yep. the ocean colored, not neutral glass. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just do a manual mode on this one. Yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this right button here. Mm -hmm. With the snake eating a man. That All looks right. like a great shot. Yes, it does. Nice golden crema. We had a nice little pre-infusion there. It took a couple seconds for its actual draw. Wonderful crema. And that is our crema wave that we're using in that grinder. So not surprising that the crema looks so good. And the setting that I'm using, I have to go ahead and manually stop here as right. well. So on that right button. But if I were to want that shot, and now that I've kind of dialed it in, I would just hold that right button down and then use our single or double button here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you just stop uh, when you uh, find that you're doubling out your grams or however you're pulling your shot. Right, yeah. So. And as you can see, you get amazing texture, perfect results. Yeah. And, uh, Are you going for that one? I think this one should be yours. I think ah. it's, it's too good for me. Yeah. <laughs> that one yeah. I just feel like serving. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that's, that? you know, I, I, I sip the crema off top and it, I still can't see the liquid. Like there's, mm -hmm. there's so much crema on this. It's, but it's lovely, honestly. Yeah. And then you do have a really nice big drip tray too. Right. And yeah. then these make it really easy to clean off too. So as I you're agree cleaning, completely. these grates are really nice instead of any sort of flat surface to those. Uh, so it makes it for just a quick little wipe down and you're not gonna get any scales or cups very dirty whatsoever. Exactly. And so now that we pulled a shot, like, yeah, I, I wanna go into a little bit more like what kind of water you would wanna use for this machine like when you're setting it up. Uh, as you saw, we, we use the uh, the BWT, uh, I use the Aqualizer in particular, uh, but we've also got the older model, the Penguin. Uh, those are great options for this sort of thing. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about anything in, in the reservoir. You just put your tap water in there and you're ready to go. Yep. What's so special about these ones though? So this one utilizes an ion exchange. So what we're actually doing is also uh, incorporating magnesium within our water. So why is that so important? Uh, when we're looking at the coffee flavor and profile, uh, it tends to shine when it's actually infused and extracted with a lot of different minerals. But some minerals we don't want inside our machine because it could actually corrode that machine, like sodium. Coffee does taste really great with sodium, right. but uh, we don't want that inside our yeah. machine. Especially if you've got sort of a bitter brew, but that's, that's something else altogether. Yeah. I think Mark made a video about that a little while mm -hmm. ago. Yep. Yeah, Which, so by the way, we got Mark back there for questions. If anybody's got any questions, so he'll he'll get them out here to mm -hmm. us. Thanks, Mark. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so utilizing magnesium, we're still going to get those really rich fr flavors that will be present, but also not, uh, you know, coat our machine and right. bad right. and you, water. Descaling <laughs> really yeah. is, is a non-issue uh, yeah. when you use really nice clean water or something like yeah. that. Uh, another option we have here is the uh, BWT. This is the best save. Yep, the I best believe. save. So. And so that's just a little sachet that's got activated carbon in it and a couple other things. And it does pretty much the same thing, but to your reservoir. So what you would do, let's, let's just say here on the top of this machine here, you would just literally drop it into the reservoir. Mm -hmm. And that's all you need to do. Uh, and give it uh, like 8 to 12 hours, I think, right? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And so maybe it's something that you do overnight. So right. there are uh, different utilizations between these. So maybe you are filling up your tank at night and you want to leave this BWT inside there and it's going to do that ion exchange for you within your reservoir. But say you're pulling a lot of shots, you right. want something different, you want something quick, you don't want to wait for that 
whole ion exchange to happen within your reservoir, and that's when you're going to aim for more, uh, more of these pitchers, uh, since this is not a plumbable machine, um, but it does have that large reservoir to utilize. And I just, you know, I, w I, I don't know if you saw, I was kind of distracted, but <laughs> I, I, I was looking at our machines and I realized that we forgot to get out the little, there's a little tube. Uh, I don't know if you, uh, where are you there, Mark, on camera mm -hmm. two. Uh, there's a little tube that comes with this as well. Uh, and it's, it's for sort of setting up the, the, the downspout down here, the exhaust. Mm -hmm. And so you want to take it right here into your, uh, into, <laughs> into your uh, drip tray. Kinda, it it kind of takes a little bit of finagling. Yeah. But you can w wiggle that in there and get that in. Mm -hmm. And then that situates itself right under the spout that, that exhausts water every time you take a shot from mm -hmm. the solenoid. And so that helps it not spray all over the place and get down in there. So yeah, so you can keep I'm a really clean that. backsplash that way. Right. Yeah. So. It, and it's and it's very nice. So mm -hmm. if you if you look over here to, to our machine that we set up earlier, I mean we're already hot. We've mm -hmm. been live for 16 minutes, and this is up to temp. Yep. Uh, which in is fact, we could probably steam on it by now. We probably could. Do we have any questions, Mark? Yes, we do. So. Uh, First of all, uh, I don't know. Oh, I do kind of know the answer to this one. It's Eduardo <laughs> is asking, hey, I bought my BZ 13 PM two years ago. Pretty happy with it, but I see the new model has a timer when brewing. Is there any way to upgrade that mod? And <laughs> I, I'm going to answer that one just because I know <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> that this version of the, P, the uh, BZ 13 is exclusive uh, to us. Yeah. So yes. yeah, sorry. So yeah, yeah there, there are go. magnetic timers that you can drop on there. Right. But, yeah. Know, that's uh, the closest thing that yeah. you can kind of get to something that we have like this. Yeah. When when it comes to that, yeah, you've got the PM. Honestly, is all I would ever need. Uh, the but for you know maybe say I mean this is an NSF rated machine, so you could use this for commercial applications yeah. and for a commercial application the time dosing is really phenomenal he kind of already went into how how you would program it it's it's, it's timed it's not volumetric as mm -hmm. some of the uh, more higher end commercial machines are but for for the price like you really can't beat it mm -hmm. um, and so you have the two options you can also set a, a very light pre-infusion which it, we can sort of show right here real quick uh, if, if we can get over there <laughs> so really you would just hit it I think we have it turned on right the pre-infusion yeah so it's just like a very light you can sort of see it just kind of wets and then and then goes away uh, it's it's not like a, a long drawn-out pre-infusion and it's not programmable mm -hmm. uh, it is what it is and so that's just kind of what it does it kind of just you can see it sort of wet it and then went full full bore um, Which can help along your extraction, though. 100%. Just a little bit of a light wetting, and then you can actually set how many seconds are in between. Right. So maybe you want to do that with some light roasts or helping along extractions for different textures or right. dark roasts. Uh, I think it's it's definitely nice, especially if you're using that uh, naked or bottomless uh, porter filter, uh, helping along right. uh, decreasing the amount of channeling that you're going to get through that. Right. So. And with you know with most heat exchange machines like. The the PID works pretty well, but you can see we do have a little bit of steam there, so you do want to do a couple cooling flushes every once in a while just to make sure that you're down to temp. Uh, I, I just noticed that when we were doing that, we yeah. got a little bit of steam out of there. That's mm -hmm. a great way to tell. If, once, if you get a little steam out of there, either your house is very cold mm -hmm. or you know your, your machine is a little over hot, and that happens with, with heat exchangers because the water in the heat exchange is just constantly getting heated by the steam. Yeah, which could uplift your puck. So I right. always get into the habit of actually uh, giving it a quick little flush every time you're going through your process of preparing your puck. Uh, mm -hmm. So preparing that porta filter, give it a little flush beforehand, and it also cleans off the group head as well. Right. So um, right. nothing detrimental whatsoever through that process. So. And uh, let, yeah, so when it comes to upkeep, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, you've got a couple great pr options here. You've got your Kafiza mm -hmm. over there, uh, which is a wonderful option for keeping your machine clean. It's a it's a detergent that helps break down the oils in coffee that will build up over time 100%. Yep, and we use this in commercial uh, 
oh, places as almost well. Almost exclusively, yep. right. And, I, and a, a jug of this, like this size that you can get from us, uh, I mean, that, that'll last you a year. Easy. Yeah. Uh, if you, and the, I would say, how often would you say to, to back flush with Kefiza? I think it kind of depends. Uh, in most home uses, I usually recommend about once a month. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're really cranking out a lot of shots every day, maybe every two to three weeks right. uh, would be pretty smart. Uh, if you have this in your bar or more of a commercial setting, I would actually aim towards uh, a nightly right. or uh, weekly. I would have said the same thing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a great product. You can also do just a water rinse uh, by using the back flush disc that did come with it. We saw mm -hmm. it. Uh, yes. Oh, and actually there is a single shot basket in there too. My goodness. Mm -hmm. we're, we're forgetting everything. I'm yep. so sorry. <laughs> 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 no, but we, we have the blind and, and the, the single shot. I, I'm not going to bother opening that. But yeah, uh, I don't know what the size of the single shot is. I would guess probably a seven gram basket. Um, for those Italian singles, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Italian singles, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, no, th and, and it's it, it's just a wonderful machine. But another great thing that you're going to want is the Rinza. Uh, I can't stress that enough. Uh, you know, I've worked in commercial environments where people never used Rinza on yep. their machines. Uh, as a, as you know, both Zach and I have been techs where we go out to shops and repair their machines when things are wrong. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen just a steam wand just caked with milk that just couldn't be fixed. Yeah. Uh, and and if, you, if with something like this, uh, you know, I wouldn't say you need to do it like every day necessarily, especially if you're, you're wiping down and purging as well as you should. You definitely should be wiping down and purging as often as possible because those tiny little holes, you'd be surprised how hard that milk can get and get clog that up so fast. Yeah, so getting in the habit of cleaning as you go will decrease the amount of times that you have to really use this, but it right. is like uh, good to get into a habit to right. do it very often. So you can't do it too much either. So that's the no, great honestly, thing right. about it. So. And I mean, both of these are gonna require you to rinse with clean water afterwards because you don't wanna leave Rinza just on your steam wand for mm -hmm. the next time because your coffee may not taste so good. And also talking about steam wands too, right. another factor of this is the quick steam. So I yeah. think that is a great factor that you're no longer doing any of those quarter turns or turning right. too far right. that you'd find in a lot of commercial if you had a maybe a different machine inside your bar. It probably had some sort of knob that you would have to turn pretty far. And this is nice, quick, easy. It right. uh, does still have a locking position where you can quick purge, so. Right, and, and that's an important thing to mention too, if you could get, get in and on there, Mark. Uh, to to uh, use the, the steam wand, you would go, if you go down or you go up, it just will snap back. But if you go to the side, Oh, if you go to the side, it stays on. Mm -hmm. So that's something de definitely important to notice. But yeah. I mean, honestly, that steam pressure is, is so good. Even yeah. though we don't have a steam gauge on there, unfortunately. We, mm -hmm. we do have the brew gauge, yeah. but it, it is great steam, as you know, Bet's Eras are really known for. Yeah, and you can really pull your shots and steam your milk in right. quick succession, too, yeah. with without really sacrificing any quality of that steam. No, I think 100%. that's the main thing about Bezeras and why I love Bezeras is that quality of steam that you get on these machines is unsurpassed. I, right. I love it, so. You know, Mark's over there looking. You got any more questions there, Mark? <laughs> yes, I, yes, I do. A couple things here. First, okay. a quick shout out to Steve Realty in Finance. He's got the BZ13DE a month ago. Says it's an excellent machine, so <laughs> thanks, Steve. Good job, uh, Steve. Love but to hear. I, another uh, real uh, quick here. Um, somebody saying, is the BZ13 your ultimate recommendation for a good machine with quick startup? And what might be some other options? And because somebody else had asked about, you know, how the Pro 300, the Proftec Pro 300, might compare. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? So it's a great question, and it's, I, I feel like we get this a lot because uh, maybe maybe not entirely because, but. I think that the, the BZ13 and the Profitech Pro 300 share a very similar aesthetic. Uh, they look very similar. They've got the, the big group you know, that sticks over. Uh, the the Profitech Pro 300 is a dual boiler machine. Uh, that, that where it's like we were talking about this has the BZ heated ring group. Instead of that on the 300, that's an entire boiler right above the group. Uh, which which provides the hot water as well as the steam boiler back in the back. Um, 
for me, honestly, like, no joking here, honestly. This really is like the the best, like if you wanted to really get into it, quick heat up times, like, I mean, it's commercial grade. Uh, it, it is commercially rated by the mm -hmm. NSF. So it's really a solid machine. And I, I use this on a daily basis in the studio uh, right off camera over there. Yeah, and I recommend this uh, on a daily basis as right. well, even in the commercial environment too, right. because of, I mean, it's so easy to program, uh, even time. I mean, it's you're going to get consistent shots, right? No matter how many you're pulling in, in that right. quick succession as well. So, I'm on it, obviously, for a commercial environment, it's not like as ideal because you can't plumb it. Uh, uh, especially in a commercial environment, I find plumbing with, you know, plumbing the drip tray is almost more important than plumbing the machine because yeah. you're going to go through a lot of water and you're going to go through a lot of water real quick. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, yeah, I would say that this is great. Uh, the 300, uh, if you want to go all the way to a dual boiler, uh, mm -hmm. I think that it's, it, I mean, it's a little bit more expensive than this. But it, it, it is kind of our entry level uh, dual boiler. I agree. Yeah. If you want to get into that realm of dual boilers and really utilize that like frothing and pulling, uh, pulling shots at the same time, it right. is that great entryway into that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can see that same sort of result on the BZ13 as well. Right. So. And I mean, for, for the price point, uh, for the, the usability of this with the shot timer, everything that you've got, like this, it's, it's really one of my top ma machines to recommend mm -hmm. to anyone, honestly. Yep. Uh, do we got anything else, Mark? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, we do. Uh, Peter Tran would like to know how many holes are in the steam tip. You know what, that is a great question. So you will see that we actually have two holes on our steam wand. It's a little hard to actually see um, yeah. and get into focus. Uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, you know what? Mine's not we, too hot. Yep, Hold there on. we go. We could take off that one. Oh, uh, maybe not. My hands are not <laughs> in the best of shape right now to do this. But utilizing but it is a two-hole steam tip. Yeah, I can yeah. tell you that right now. Yep. 100%. Utilizing that kind of vertical uh, two hole as well. You can really get that back pressure to really start that whirlpool within exactly. working your milk exactly. and building really nice foam quickly as well. Right. So. Anything else, Mark? Nope. Nope. So we we discussed this beforehand, and I think that we can pull this off. Uh, we were, you know, we both have mustaches, yes. and we both pour latte art. So we kind of mm -hmm. figured once we got these both up, we would throw down. And yeah. we would see who can do better latte art mm -hmm. from these two machines. Yep. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, like, it, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we'll, we'll get them. You know, I think that I have enough water in this after, after filling. Yeah, I should have enough water. Let's, let's pull a shot over here and we'll split it. Uh, and you're using, what, the fellow Eddie? Yeah, so I'll just be able to measure this. Right. Uh, and I've got... My, my, my choice is the uh, little rev revolution, yeah. the Revo, I call it. Gotcha. Uh, so it'll be also the choice of... So for those of you who don't know what a throwdown is, it kind of is uh, best <laughs> latte art versus best latte <laughs> art. Uh, you know, you're looking at contrast of your pour, uh, the actual design itself, uh, and then the favoritism of who has the best mustache as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll put them out here, and you know what? Hit us up in the comments of which one you think did better uh and we'll we'll see what happens but this i think this this could be fun you want to get us let's go set ahead up with a shot get some shots going here i have i don't know if i've ever even poured into the betsera mugs so this will be fun yeah we're gonna find out yeah. all of us together right yeah. now all i'm right. just gonna step off for just a second too you got it so the best thing when first starting out with lots here at two is uh basically steaming your milk and pulling those shots as uh, close together as possible during this process. So you can really start with a nice uh, contrasted base so you can create some really nice latte art. Okay, so texture. And honestly, like the, this by far second to getting good milk texture. That's yep. the number one. And, and you really have to hang in there too. You're gonna get a lot of bad pours when right. first starting out. So the thing is, is practice, practice, practice. Make sure that you get your milk textures down, you're pulling your shots correctly as well, uh, and then just 
right. you know, take a whole bunch of gallons of milk and just keep right. pouring. So, no, and that's yeah. and that's that's no joke. Uh, mm -hmm. Your your best barista in your local shop is doing hundreds of drinks a day, and un unless you've got a I hate to say it, unless you've got a real problem, you're probably not making 100 drinks a day at your house for yourself. <laughs> so, but yeah, let's, let's see what we got. Myself as I practice sometimes, you know. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Zach, you're, you're we'll, madman. We'll see how it goes. All right. All right. Okay, so I, I feel like we're, we're doing pretty well. All right. Yeah, so we stayed nice, dialed in there. I'm gonna kind of wash this shot, but we do want to go ahead and start uh, steaming our milk as soon as possible uh, throughout this process. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop my shot right where we actually pulled it earlier. Uh, you know, kind of basing it off that time that you know we kept things very consistent throughout that. So we should have a perfectly well uh, displaced shot right there between both yeah. of our cups. Looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start steaming right away. Yeah, me too. Yep, I'm even ready. though I just brewed, I'm ready. I might have aerated it a little too much. Yeah, so we're kind of going for those small little chirps here. Oop. Sometimes I use my fingers as well to kind of keep myself very still, and then really focusing on that whirlpool. Oop. I need to wrap. Don't you dare. I also kind of over aerated too. I think we're a little out of practice maybe. Oh man. <laughs> oh yeah, we can no. get that to you. We can definitely, uh, but, hey, yeah, you know, next time, right? <laughs> yep, yeah, we can definitely uh, bring time. it back, and we'll uh, do some later on videos, you know. Honestly, like, stuff, uh, and, so. and to be honest, like swans were just never something I ever practiced. Uh, okay, to be you. honest, like I, I was always uh, the shop that I worked in. Every mug had to have a tulip in it, so mm -hmm. like tulip, tulip, tulip is all I did for years, five years. Yeah, uh, my God. For years yeah. I would practice, I would do a lot of different drawing art as well, yeah. where you're actually utilizing these fine tips to really draw on top. Um, obviously I'm very out of practice at this point, Well, uh, but <laughs> also it happens to the best of us, as, it really does. As I mentioned, so. I kind of use this machine all the time, so yeah. I have that advantage, advantage mm -hmm. as well. I, I know what they expect from the Steam One, so. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that's, um, if we don't have anything else, you know, I, I you, thank you, Mark. Thank everybody for watching. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say that that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have so a winner too. So. Oh, geez. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for joining me out here, Zach. Thanks this for was, having me. This was uh, the most fun I've had on live television ever. Yep. So uh, <laughs> we try. I'm going to say yeah. see you later uh, and check back soon for even more of these because they're going to keep coming. Yep. <laughs>